the blue corner. He's wearing black trunks, trimmed with gold, weighed in at an even 200 pounds. From Norfolk, Virginia, let's make him welcome, Bobby Jordan. Jordan. He's wearing black trunks, trimmed with pink, weighed in at an even 215 pounds. From Pontiac, Michigan, let's hear it and make him welcome, Pete Lon Thomas. Thomas. Ten round. Thomas, you know, he's won 10 and lost 10 with the last nine in a row by knockout. He's a boxer puncher. Bobby Jordan is 27 years old, six feet two, and he's won eight and lost three with three knockouts. He's been fighting quite a while, an experienced fighter, a good boxer, but only a fair puncher. Now we'll uh, see just how the training of uh, Georgie Benton is uh, going to affect the career of Pinklin, Pinky Thomas. Benton was a master boxer and uh, uh a real master of the sweet science, and he has had a tremendous impact on most of the fighters that, that he has trained. Especially Leon Spinks for yeah. a while. He led Leon Spinks to uh, beating Muhammad Ali for the heavyweight championship of the world. All right, and then because of a personality clash, he wasn't in the corner of Spinks for the return, and of course, uh, Spinks went back to many of his amateur ways and uh, was defeated. All right, here we have round one between Pinklin Thomas and Bobby Jordan. Bobby Jordan is, uh, you're watching in color, I'm sure, is wearing the black trunks with the yellow trim and the yellow down the side. And Thomas is wearing the uh, black trunks with the pink down the side. Both have shown that they have good jabs so far. A grazing right to the head by uh, Thomas didn't do too much damage on uh, his opponent, Bobby Jordan. As we told you, Jordan is a good boxer, and he picks off those punches pretty well with moving those gloves around and fights out of that crouch, which uh, up to now is uh, bothering Thomas just a little bit. It would seem to me, Don, that uh, Jordan's strategy here should be to take it easy for a few rounds and see how uh, Pink and uh, uh, Thomas's conditioning is. Uh, that's a fact. You, you don't get too much condition playing the wheels. <laughs> they got him out of the casino at 3.30 this morning asking him he wanted to fight, so we'll have to find out what kind of condition he's in. Even we got to bed before that, Jerry. <laughs> yes, oh, a few guys have been pulled out of casinos for fights, but I don't know if it's for this kind of a fight. <laughs> <laughs> we have seen that Thomas has a quick, sneaky right hand and a, a, a hard left hook. And he's all over Jordan at the moment with uh, round one almost half over. It's scheduled for 10. Thomas, a very aggressive fighter and a good counter puncher is Jordan, as you can see from that right hand. But he, Jordan is taking a lathering, and, uh, but he's boxing well defensively. He's picking off both of those punches on the glove. This could wear Thomas out. Conversely, Thomas, of course, is trying to end it quickly. Referee is Tony Perez, an experienced arbiter. And incidentally, the referee and the judges vote here in New Jersey. The referee will be picking up the slips after the round and taking them to the commission. The action slows down a little bit, but Thomas is still the aggressor. As Jordan backs into a neutral corner, and he, Thomas is solving that defense and getting by the guard. Thomas is smartly working the body and the head. This is survival time right here. Right, and they're just above our HBO microphones, and there is the end of round one. And we go back to the corner of Pinklin, Pinky Thomas from Pontiac, Michigan. Let's have a look at a replay of that corner action, and I'd like to hear your comments about what you see in Thomas, Jerry. Well, well Thomas, has he's got a very strong left jab, and he's a powerful puncher, but if you'll notice Jordan, He's got the hands up by the face. He's not getting hit any solid shots on the chin. Good jab there that snuck through. He really did no damage, and he may wear himself out because of his late entry. Reminds me of your, your fight, your comeback when you fought Muhammad Ali, when everybody was saying, can Ali go the distance? When <laughs> well, Ali came out of his uh, enforced exile. We never <laughs> got to experience anything because of our typical cut. And know? incidentally, right. Jerry, here is the same referee who stopped that fight, Tony Perez. Yes, Do you think it should have been stopped? Uh, well, <laughs> no fighter ever thinks a fight should be stopped if he really wants to be a fighter. 
But Rudy Perez is one of the best in the business. Very gracious of you. Here's round two. Scheduled for 10 rounds. Bobby Jordan in the black and the yellow, or the gold. Pinky Thomas in the black and the pink. And has been the aggressor. A trickle of blood from Jordan's no uh, nose. Well, Jordan always looks pained in there, apparently. That's his uh, style, I suppose. He probably looks pained walking down the street. That's just the way he looks. I just noticed that Thomas goes in there after throwing a right who leaves himself wide open, and he was tagged for it. He got hit a pretty decent right hand in the last round. Hey, if you look at the, the bodies, Pinkton Thomas has, has almost a perfect body for heavyweight boxes. Not an ounce of flab on him anywhere. But now we're going to find out what kind of condition he's in. At, at 215, he's very trim. Jordan may be styled a journeyman fighter, but uh, he's usually around at the finish. Whether he will be in this one, I don't know. A little swelling on the right eye of uh, Bobby Jordan. Jordan fighting back well, and again, Thomas is getting through the guard and being counter-punched well by Jordan. A couple of beautiful, and there's another one. Thomas is vulnerable to the right hand, and now the left hook. And Thomas may well be tiring. It as we come like, like he's trying a little too hard, Don. He could be. And he may punch himself out. Thomas is spot hitting now. He's also keeping his hands down, and he might get countered by Jordan, well, who he is does. a heavyweight. He, he's he's a, he's vulnerable to that right hand, and he's been tagged with it time and again in this round. There's another one. Thomas is being rocked. He took some good shots and came right back, though. He was almost daring him to hit it, to, to hit him there at the very end, but uh, Jordan's left, the right eye is almost closing. There's been little to choose between them in the fight. Thomas had the edge in the first round, and Jordan has had the edge in this round. Thomas is showboating a little bit and leaving himself wide open around the head. If fighters this size, anything can happen. I'm sure That's an Bobby Jordan knows it. Maybe we'll get a shot of that right eye between rounds, the right eye of Bobby Jordan. It is within inches uh, or less than an inch of being closed for the evening anyway. We're going to take a look at another replay here where Jordan, with his back to the ropes, uh, got in some awfully good punches on Pinkton. It didn't stun Thomas. There you see a right hand. Look at that left hand that down low. No, no defense. It was, a, it was a glancing shot. Penguin Thomas, I guess, was kind of expecting it, but you never want to open yourself up to a heavyweight. They can punch and can do damage at any time. There's the right eye of uh, Bobby Jordan. There's not much vision left that in looks, that little space. That looks more like a rat than a mouse to me. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's pretty a big, big one. Yeah. I have to agree with you, Larry. <laughs> There's a trainer manager, Jimmy Lumpkin, was uh, trying to uh, reduce the swelling there. Lumpkin? What a name for a guy <laughs> who's treating a mouse. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. You are right about it, Don. Uh, Bobby Jordan looks like he's in constant pain out there. Anyway, here's round three. Bobby Jordan in the black trunks with the gold trim. Pinky Thomas, the black trunks with the pink trim. And I, I hate to use the cliche, but it's a battle of attrition. And Jordan is in his favorite spot on the ropes in a neutral corner and doing the same thing he did in la last round, nailing Thomas, who leaves himself open. And Thomas tries to get through those gloves defense and does once in a while and doesn't at other times. Jordan is fighting a smart fight. Thomas is not at the moment. Franklin Thomas is uh, considerably stronger than Jordan, but I think uh, the better all-around boxer is Bobby Jordan. He's making all those punches, catching them all on the gloves, and making him 
slip and miss, and uh, they could wear out Thomas. Now Thomas is shifting to the body and is getting through the guard now. Yeah, he's, hitting, he's landing some heavy Yes, heavy he is. Fire as right George stays here. on the ropes. It's round three, scheduled for ten. Tony Perez, the referee. This fight can be held in about a five-foot ring. Right. Maybe in a phone booth. He's throwing powerful punches, but they're all being caught by the gloves of Bobby Jordan. If one of them does have to slip through with a Jordan power, has found him again with that loose right hand on the open chin. And there it goes again. And that followed one by did, the left hook. That did a little bit of damage, and Tom was not going to say it didn't. Jordan obviously worried about his closing right eye. They're in the same spot again. Call that Jordan's alley. And uh, Thomas pecks away at that left, at that right eye. Jordan with the gloves up high, waiting for Thomas to drop his guard. Big flurry, and that, that's the type that could cause a fighter to punch himself out, couldn't it, Jerry? Sure can, and punches that, uh, that don't do any damage or miss take a little bit more out of you than the ones that do land. He's expending an awful lot of energy keeping Jordan in the corner. It may take its toll, but so far he's... Well, it's been a good round for Thomas. He's had two good rounds, and Jordan's had one. There's the bell, ending round three. All right, there you have again the uh, right eye of Bobby Jordan, and it, may I say, it's not getting any better. Bobby Jordan in the black trunks with the gold trim, backing towards the ropes on the other side of the ring now. Pinkland Thomas, the black trunks and the pink stripe down the side. That right eye right now, Don, looks like it's just about to burst open. It could any moment. Might be a good thing for him if it does. It could take some of the swelling down, definitely. But the only thing he can see out of that eye is that left hand hitting him again. That's continually landing on that eye. No matter, it might lessen the swelling if it opens up, but nobody wants to see a fighter get cut. At the moment, it's a bit one-sided with Thomas carrying the fight and seemingly pulling away, although every so often Bobby Jordan will come back with a punch like he just threw a moment ago. He had one good round, the second, and Thomas had two good rounds. Here we are in round four of a 10-rounder. Thomas's corner has given him instructions not to flurry, uh, reinforcing what you said in the last round, Jerry, that it's too much effort for too little game. He's not landing the punches because Bobby Jordan's a good defensive fighter. The gloves are up there blocking the punches. At the moment, Thomas is bothered by the defense of Jordan. Now we've got Thomas against the ropes for the first time. And we turn around as, as Jordan is whacking him now. It reverses itself. Jordan is back to the just above our HBO cameras here. Thomas started to play a little game there. Right. Could little. cost him later. Sometimes those games are a sign of fatigue, a way of trying to buy time. But right now, he's coming on very strongly. And right now, uh, Thomas looks in real good shape. He still leaves himself open around the head, however. He's throwing strong punches, but if you watch him, I mean, he's not turning his body in, into the punches. They're strictly arm punches right now. No power behind them. Jordan seems to have more power in his, although they're not all landing. Another couple of good belts to the body by Thomas. Yeah. Jordan's still on the ropes. Jordan's going to have a mouse on his stomach soon. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, it's all Thomas with an occasional flurry by Jordan. The referee is not needed, and he smartly stays out of the picture. Well, here we are in the, 
the corner of uh, Bobby Jordan again with Jerry Lumpkin, his uh, trainer manager. On the outside is John Hunter. Let me ask you, Jerry, you too, Don. Was there a time when a trainer in a really big fight might deliberately lance a mouse like that? It has happened before. Oh, yes. uh, Esme Laguna fought uh, Ken Buchanan. Buchanan's left eye was completely closed, and they lanced the eye to open it up and take the swelling down. And he went on to beat Laguna to, to retain his title. I don't know if it's legal anymore, is it, Jerry? Well, it's not a matter not have been of... legal then. It's not a matter of legality. It's <laughs> a matter of uh, survival. <laughs> All right, round five. Pinky Thomas, who was a uh, substitute for undefeated Randy Cobb, who, as Len and I have told you earlier, came down with bursitis last night, undefeated Randy, and that's a shame because he is undefeated and he's a good heavyweight with great prospects. He's won about 13 fights, all of them by KOs. I hope we can see him again sometime. You're knocking out heavyweights. I don't care what the caliber they are. If you're knocking them out, you've well, got to have some punching ability. Maybe Caesar's Boardwalk Regency can get them together again. Anyway, it's uh, the pattern of the previous rounds. Jordan working off the ropes and Thomas working on him. And being much more deliberate and calculated now, perhaps because he is a little tired. He may be pacing himself. We're talking about Thomas, who took this bout on less than 24 hours' notice. Well, he should be saving his energy. He's got uh, a few more rounds to go, and the way Bobby Jordan is fighting, it looks like it's going to go the distance. But anything can happen at any time. Well, you can't tell, Jerry and Larry, because every so often, Thomas does leave himself open, and uh, Jordan connects. But you have to question the punching power of Bobby Jordan. Right. He's, uh, he's landed some clean shots on Thomas and done no real damage. Yeah, it's obvious that Thomas is contemptuous of Jordan's punching ability. Oh, I like that one, Larry. <laughs> I have to question both of their punching abilities. Uh, it's, it's hard to question a man that's had nine consecutive knockouts, but I haven't seen any extensive power here. Jordan goes back into his early defensive tactics out of fighting, fighting covering up out of a bob and a weave occasionally. A little relaxing by Pinky Thomas. I'd say a little bit more resting than relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, if Jordan's strategy is to have uh, Thomas try to punch himself out, he's doing a good job of it. <laughs> yes, but he's running out of rounds to survive. The referee is Tony Perez, who has not had a great deal to do so far. This is one of the slower rounds of the fight. The earlier ones were, were much faster, and uh, some in the audience are getting, getting a little irritated at the lack of action. Jordan's right eye is just a slit now. He can just barely see out of it. That's going to be tough to defend against a uh, left hook or a left jab. Now the crowd voices its irritation at the uh, lack of action in the fight, and the commission doctor has gone up there now. That's Dr. Frank Doggett, who is... Take a uh, look at the, those taking, last uh, 15 or 20 seconds of the round as Thomas leans in on Jordan, and he's just trying to impose his strength here on his opponent and not use himself up too much. It's been rather a carbon copy just of every round. It's just been rather the same. Thomas putting the pressure on him. Jordan staying in the corner. The fight is over. The fight is over. The doctor, Frank Doggett of the commission, has told Tony Perez, the referee, that that is it. And the winner, winning his 11th fight and 10 in a row by knockouts, is Pinklin Pinky Thomas. While we have a moment here, I'd like to tell you about Frank Shane, who is the very good ring announcer in there. And he's uh, talking to his wife, Eva. Eva Shane is one of the judges tonight. And they are the only uh, ring announcer judge that in captivity, Larry, as far as I know. Who are also man and wife, you're saying. <laughs> They're married. I would say that was a fairly impressive performance by Vinky Thomas uh, on about uh, 16 hours' notice. Bobby yeah. Jordan unable to continue. The winner by a TKO at the end of the fifth round, Pink Lon. Thomas, Thomas.
Franklin Thomas continues his undefeated ways. Won 11 now and lost none. Well, you did a good job of pounding and staying on top of him, but he was into a defensive shell. It was kind of tough to penetrate. That's right. Well, it was kind of tough for me, Jerry. You know, I, I, have, I haven't fought in uh, five months, and I haven't boxed over seven rounds in that time. And then to catch you in the casino at 3.30 in the morning, that makes it rather difficult to come out here and perform. Uh... I was broke from losing my money in the casino. And, uh, well, you know, if I could have helped the promotion, I helped myself too often. Well, you did a good job and all. Maybe you got some of the money back here in this fight that you lost on the tables, guys. Right. Well, we wish you the best of luck and have a good future. All right.